Hey YouTube, Mike that tankless guy here. How are we all doing today? I hope we all had a safe and productive week. All right, today's video is probably one of the most important um, part of the installation that you will have on a condensing tankless heater. Now, here we have a Navion NPE model unit. It doesn't matter what size it is. Any condensing tankless is going to have a condensate drain line. Okay, so um, just like the word says, it's a condensing tankless unit. It evacuates condensate from the unit while it is functioning. Depending also on the weather conditions is if it, oh, also and location of the tankless within the home, the building, the structure, also will determine the amount of condensate. Like here in Florida, the, um, when it's warmer and cooler, it condensates differently. But it's still going to condensate. It still needs to exit the water. Now, what I find when I go to jobs that have these units installed, and it doesn't matter what brand it is, I find that the installer left the plastic cap on the condensate drain line fitting. There is no directional pipe to direct this somewhere. It's just flowing out onto the electrical, the gas, the water fittings. Um, so that is a problem. You need to get this to a place and you need to get it there properly. Now, as you know, condensate is acidic, okay? It will deteriorate metal. Um, it will, it's not good to dump into the sewer because of the um, acidity value. The pH is high on it. So you need to get it to a location as per code. So check your local code to know exactly the proper way to do it. But what I'm going to show you here will cover all the bases. All right? So we're going to take the um, camera off and I'll show you. But down here on the on a Navion, there is a condensate fitting right next to the condensate clean out. So all condensate traps which is back here the trap is back here and there's a rubber tube that comes from the lower heat exchanger into the tube there's a trap it fills up when the trap fills it goes into a next little passageway comes out the pipe goes comes out the little male fitting and out wherever you're going to go all right we carry when we come and do a tankless a condensing tankless we fill up this little plastic um, tub with our condensate drain fittings and our relief pipe fittings. Now, the fittings that you're going to need are a half inch plastic CPVC female adapter and it has a washer inside of it. You are not going to use, now the only thing that I was able to have to show you is one of these transition fittings. The fitting that actually either has brass or this, um, it's kind of like chromish brass. It's called a transition. So it's got metal to CPVC in a female version of it. This is a male version. So this is a three quarter male by three quarter CPVC. In this instance, this would be a half inch female of the same material by CPVC. You're not going to use this. It will rot away. Use CPVC. Don't use PVC. Use CPVC. So you need a female adapter. You need a T. You need a street L and two short pieces of half inch CPVC. You're going to make the first part that comes out of that male fitting 
look like this. Okay? Then let's just say we're dumping it straight down. So, out of the male fitting, this is a vent. This prevents vapor lock. It prevents water from locking up in this pipe. Whether it goes out the wall into the dirt, goes down into a floor drain, or goes down and air gap into a sewer. You need to have that vent. The vent is very important. I see it all the time. No vent, an adapter, most of the time it's butt transition. Straight down, out the wall, into a floor drain, into the sewer. No neutralizer, no nothing. What happens is that it will not evacuate the water out of this pipe. It backs up into the heat exchanger and you end up getting a leak through one of the seams. It is inherent on a Renai product on the lower heat exchanger between the primary and secondary. You will get water bubbling out of the gasket thinking the heat exchanger is leaking, but it's not. It's a backed up trap. So it must look like this. There is no exceptions to the rule. Multiple units. If you have multiple condensing units, whether it's 2, 3, 4, 20, my suggestion is to let them go out separately. You should not combine these together like two, two units and two half inch. That It's not going to be enough pipe uh, surface to evacuate that condensate. So if you were going to put two together, you should have it in at least one inch, if not inch and a quarter. All right, so you need to double or triple the size of the pipe. So if you've got 10 units, you'll end up with like 10 inch pipe. But my suggestion is you'll never have a problem if you just let them go separately into drains. Okay? Now, of course, if it is a major install of 10 units and you are dumping it into the sewer, say it's in a commercial building, a, a federal building, an airport, a school, <clears throat> you're going to need some type of very large neutralizer. So then an engineer would actually size it and size the piping for that neutralizer because you're not going to have 10 small neutralizers on there. We'll get into that in a second. All right, this is Navion's neutralizer. If I can get it out of the box, then I'll show you the instruction sheet. So this is the neutralizer. Filled with these pellets. And there is, a, actually, this is the inlet right here. And the outlet, notice the outlet is higher. See, it says outlet, inlet, the inlet goes in the middle. There would be a bypass, it comes with hoses. I'll show you the instruction sheet in a second. And the condensate would go through here, get mixed with these pellets, get neutralized, exit, and go to the sewer. But then you would have a bypass on here because if this thing, if it's not maintained, you can take this apart and replenish the pellets. And it has to be done by checking the pH that's coming out to know if these things are now no good. And then this would then dump into a city sewer, uh, a sewer in a house, a sewer in some type of commercial or federal building. <clears throat> if you're going to just dump it outside, you can dump it into the dirt because the dirt will absorb the pH. Now, there are, I'm going to get some comments in here that says, oh no, you're going to kill the grass, you're going to kill the bushes. I, I have been doing this for years. We go back and service our tanklesses. We have tanklesses eight, nine, ten years. 
no, it, then they're not dying. There's not enough coming out of there. So you can dump it, but again, you need to follow your plumbing code for your area. So this is the instruction sheet for the neutralizer. As you can see, the outlet is up higher, so you can't spin this. The outlet, so it's kind of almost like a trap. So you, they give you the dimensions for inlet and outlet. Then inside the kit, you could put it vertical or horizontal, and you have a bypass. So that if this thing clogs up, it will come out this Y and come down temporarily until you fix or change this. That's the only reason that you have a bypass on it. It's just so that this thing is not backing up back into the trap. So that's the neutralizer. I will have all of the, um, um, I'll have the model number to this below. So let me, let me put this on and show you the parts that are on the actual unit. And I'm just gonna just throw this in temporarily. Okay, let me take the camera off. So this is the condensate trap all the way in the back, the white thing. See the black tube that comes from the heat exchanger into it. And then underneath the unit, there's, this is the clean out right here. So you would pull this, pull this out, and water would come out. You clean it, you can, you can swab it out. And then just make sure when you put that back in, it's all the way up and push that and now that locks it back in and that's the way that that T is supposed to look just like that put it towards the back so it's away from the cold or the inlet then a pipe down and that's what would vent so there's your condensate trap back there again that white there's the rubber tube kind of looks like an S then back down out of it and this here is see it's a half inch plastic male fitting that will have a black plastic cap on it you have to remove that and do exactly what I just showed you All right, let me get this back on Okay. All right, so let's just put this back together. So that is exactly the way it's supposed to look for any unit. Don't use the metal transition. It's just going to rot away. Use the plastic. You can, I don't know if your supply house won't have them. We purchase them in box quantity from Home Depot. Now, of course, as you can see, we carry a bunch of elbow street L's, 45 street 45s, because it depends on where we're going to go out with it or where we're going with it. Um, sometimes we can use the old relief pipeline that goes outside. So we just go from the half inch to three quarter or the drain pan line, which is one inch. That's what we did yesterday. We just put it right outside. When you go outside, when you go through the wall, we use two plastic escutcheons. We silicone them right to the wall. Let them dry. It gives it nice. We silicone the hole we drill. We silicone in here. We put them on. We buy split. So if we forget, we can put them on. So they're always just a nice, clean installation. It's all we carry in here. When you're going outside, 
You don't want to, so outside, so let's just say, this is the pipe going through the wall. You have one escutcheon here, one escutcheon there. So you, that's your wall. It's coming through the wall. This is your wall. This is the pipe coming down. Don't leave the pipe like that. What you want to do is take your cutter and cut a slice out of it. Even do that with your relief pipe. Doesn't matter which way you put it. So again, that's your inside wall, that's your outside wall, all right, that's your wall, here's your pipe. When this thing is draining, it's going to drain out, it's going to drain straight out. It's not going to swirl around the pipe. It's going to come right out nice because it's allowing a little air in here. Also, when you're installing the line, well, I don't know if I could do this with such a short little piece, but let's try it. All right, you're installing this line. If it's just like this, it's, it's perfect. But if this is long, or you're going from the tankless down the wall, then out, it's got to be pitched. It's like a sewer. You, it's running out by gravity. So you don't need it like this because this is going to look ugly. But just, you know, within that first hair of the bubble, pitched enough that it will run outside the building perfectly. Okay? So I, I'm, I'm going to just keep mentioning it. Very important to have this T in. Use PVC. Especially don't use copper or metal. It, it'll be gone. And don't use a transition which has the metal. Use the plastic female CPVC adapter. Okay? All right, YouTube. Again, I'd like to thank you all for all of the comments, the likes, the subscribes, the questions. Hit that notification bell. It'll help the channel if you comment, if you subscribe if you like it'll really help the channel um, my email will be below model number for the neutralizer will be below fitting list for the general area and a couple of extra will be in the description below all right YouTube alrighty I hope you enjoyed the video you all be safe out there and I'll see you next week on the next video bye bye now